Hey everyone, so it's finally time for an update on the uh, K997. I've received a whole bunch of parts. I finally got the, uh, my adapter plate and clutch kit from Kennedy Engineering Products, Kep. So, this is, let's start with this actually. So this is the, the aluminum adapter plate that will allow me to bolt the Porsche transaxle to my uh, K24. And then they've also provided this clutch with spacer and flywheel. So with these two bits and pieces, I can basically mate my, properly mate the Porsche transaxle to the K24. Um, what I'm also trying to figure out is what we're gonna do for intake manifold. I think I really like this setup. Um, with the, the Honda S2000, 2006 model with the drive-by-wire throttle body, so what we have is all the accessories on the on the engine and the intake manifold with throttle body. So to make this work, we're gonna have to make an adapter plate. Let's go from the K24 head to the S2000 intake manifold, but not a problem. We can make one out of aluminum with this machine. Um, in regards to the accessories, I, uh, I was torn, I was trying to figure out what to do about power steering, because obviously I want to keep power steering and AC, so AC is not a problem. You can keep the OEM Honda AC. Power, water pump's no problem, alternator's no problem, but keeping the power steering, at least the hydraulic pop, pump on the engine, is not gonna be possible. It shares the exact same space that the throttle body is, um, so. We have to figure out a solution for that. And what I think the plan is, is so many cars now have um, electric hydraulic pumps. Um, like older MR2s used to have them and like newer cars like the Mazda 3 has them and newer Altimas have them. So I'm just gonna get one, one of those and basically mount it somewhere, find some space in the engine bay or maybe in, in the trunk up front and mount that hydraulic pump and then use the Cyvex to control it. Um, and then that will provide the hydraulic pressure for the power steering system. And then I don't have to deal with it on the engine, which allows me the space for the throttle body without having to make anything or go crazy with an intake manifold. Cause ideally I'd like to try to keep everything, uh, everything as OEM as possible just to make life simple. So yeah. Um, so yeah. This, it fits nicely. It's gonna be interesting figuring out the coolant, but uh, not a big deal, I don't think. I'm gonna use the S2000 water housing and maybe redirect all coolant through here instead of back here, so I can make a block off plate here, which will give me more space behind the engine. Um, but yeah, so far, some good progress. Uh, I've also been working on the wiring. <coughs> what I, uh, the Porsche, Porsche wiring is pretty cool. It has these connectors that allow you to just quickly disconnect all the engine wiring harness from the car. And I really didn't want to cut up this wiring harness. So I did some internet scouring and found out that E36 BMWs share these exact same connectors. So I was able to go on eBay and buy some connectors. And I have two and they work perfectly in here. So, I can basically plug these in. Right there. And these will be the start of the wiring harness and then I have the full Honda engine, wi engine wiring harness and I will just basically match them all up wire, wire by wire and then assign all the pins in, uh, in the Cyvex ECU. So that's that for the wiring. Uh, that's, we're getting pretty close in that. Um, but yeah, so today, I'm gonna, we're gonna undo our, our wood adapter plate that we made, and I'm gonna start fitting up the adapter plate. I might not put the clutch in just yet. I might test, I'll test fit it maybe, but I don't think I'll actually put the clutch in because right now I don't have an alignment tool. I'm gonna have to try to find an alignment tool for, like a Porsche alignment tool, so, I, so when we put the transmission on, everything lines up. 
but not a big deal. I, for today at least, we can bolt, hopefully bolt up this transaxle to the engine and then maybe see how far we get and test fit it a bit more. I'd really like to test fit the engine in with the intake manifold on and the accessories on so we can see how much space we're working with. But yeah, I guess uh, we'll get started with that. All right, the beginning, we have got the, just adapter plate kind of just pushed on, dowel pins are holding it, <clears throat> but so far it looks super nice. Um, so yeah, we got, we're gonna start putting the bolts on that hold it in place, and then we'll bolt up this transaxle, and see how it goes, so yeah. Okay, so we got the, Adapter plate all bolted up to the transmission. We're going to we test fit the starter. It, it works good. You have to grind it a little bit. I can show you that later. Um, but yeah, it's all bolted up. The clutch and the flywheel is not inside. But what we want to do is now uh, test fit this in the engine bay. I think we're going to do it slightly different this time. We're going to use the forklift. Slip it into our little I don't know cart we've made and then that'll allow us to position it better, I think, and then up higher so we can work on it a bit better. So yeah, let's, uh, let's test that out and see if we can get this to work. Okay, so we have the engine in again, this time with our adapter plate. This, it's sitting roughly where I think I would want it. Technically, the lowest point of the car is this, this piece here. The oil pan is kind of in line with it, so ground clearance should be fine. But it gives us a fair amount of space in the engine bay. If I can grab a light. So in this case, plenty of room in the engine bay. Technically, I can I can check the oil. I pull I can pull the dipstick out. I can add oil. It would just have to be with a funnel and a hose. Like I can't pour it directly in, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, have the S2000 intake manifold on. Tons of space around it. Um, the pulleys and the accessories. Everything clears really well. Lots of room. Drive shafts. have no issues, they line up well. Clearance, like, lots of clearance back here. This is actually where, where I was most worried about <clears throat> um, clearance for the, uh, the coolant housing. But there's lots of room there. Technically, I could even run my intercooler piping through there. There's lots of room. Um, yeah, so far so good. This is, so I guess the next step, we have to make the brace to, that will be the front engine mount. So basically from this point to the other point, we're gonna run uh, some tubing from here to here and mount it to the, to the front of the engine over here. And then maybe add another brace on the, on the side, the exhaust side of the engine. Maybe add, <clears throat> there's all these spots on the engine over here. We can have something that comes off and comes down just to give it a bit more torsional support. But yeah, lots of room. Should be, should be plenty of room for the turbo. Turbo will sit roughly here. And then uh, exhaust, downpipe. The plan is to have uh, basically a full exhaust system and uh, a dump pipe. So I'm gonna have a cutout that will allow the exhaust to come straight out with no muffler, no cat or anything, and then another 
and then a bypass that takes it through a high flow cat and a muffler. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, I got this guy over here. So I'm gonna use this guy as the bypass, control it with the Cyvex, have it somewhere back here probably, in this space to redirect the exhaust. But uh, I have a bunch of cool stuff planned for this. This being one of the pieces so I can have quiet exhaust and loud exhaust. Um, yeah, so I guess the next step is we gotta make this mount so we can get it in. Once, and then I'm, in the meantime, I'm gonna be working on the wiring harness so that once it's bolted in, I can technically fire it up. Um, once the wiring harness is all done, get the plug in the Cyvex, load up, a, create a base map for it, and fire it up. Connecting, connecting the fuel is super easy. Right now the car has a returnless system, so and the engine's designed, like this engine is, was designed for returnless system, so I'll just make the connection. Um, and we'll probably see how far I can push the stock fuel pump and uh, see if I can get to 400 with this, with this stock engine and the stock fuel system on the Porsche. Supposedly it's doable. Supposedly the stock fuel system's good for close to five, if not five, um, which should be plenty for this stock engine. And if all of this works, then the plan is I have another one of these engines and I will be putting a set of pistons and rods in it and then pushing it even further because the goal is at least 500, if not six. The clutch is rated for well over that. I think it's something like 800 horse. So, if not more. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Making some good progress. I'm hoping this week, hopefully this week I can start creating the, the rear, or the, well, I don't know, I guess it's the rear, rear brace or engine bracket. Um, and get this thing held in place on its own without the forklift. So, anyways, that's it for now. I uh, hope to make some, some more progress this week and maybe make another video. If, uh, if you like this, please like it, please share it, please comment. Um, it's, I think it's, getting, it's gonna get really cool very soon and hopefully in a few weeks I can actually try to fire it up. The exhaust system won't be done, the intake won't be done, but, uh, and the cooling may not be done, but at least fire it up to hear it run. And uh, I think that'll be, that'll be pretty cool. Anyways, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.